Hey folks, Jeff here at Back to Country. Today we're working on the truck again. If you've been following along, you know that uh, my truck is over 20 years old now. And with that comes an increased level of maintenance. So what's happening now is our uh, anti-lock brake system. The warning light has been coming on. And uh, yeah, if you're familiar with that, then the most common uh, error that you have with your anti-lock brake system is probably going to be your wheel speed sensor. So this particular truck, the F-150, has three sensors, one on each front tire, and then on the back, it uh, is in the differential. So three sensors, if any one of those goes bad, uh, that'll sure enough do it. Now there are other things that could go wrong as well. So first thing we're gonna do is check the computer and see what that tells us. So let's have a look. So I use this cool little gadget here. It's a OBD Link MX Plus. And this is just a little uh, reader that you plug in to your uh, diagnostic port on your vehicle and uh, it'll read your trouble codes and all that kind of stuff now the reason I like this one is because rather than uh, being like a standalone unit this actually links via Bluetooth to your phone and can work with multiple uh, software packages whatever you want to call it apps uh, meaning it can be updated so I've got several other uh, plug-in units and basically they are what they are but this one right here uh, is capable to be updated and it's easy to just leave this in my truck so if I'm on the road or whatever and I have a problem I just link this to my phone and uh, check it out and can read the computer and see what the issue is so let's uh, plug this thing in and I'll show you how it works. So down here uh, under the dash, we've got the diagnostic port right there. And so the first thing we got to do is just plug it in and you see we get a power light. And the Bluetooth light is blinking there as well. So that's where we start. The next thing I got to do is take out my phone. I go to settings. Now this is an iPhone. Bluetooth. And then what I've got to do is come down here. You can see OBD link. And uh, it's not connected. We're going to just click on that. And now it's connected. So we connect via Bluetooth. Because I've done it many times. That's already uh, in there. Okay, so we're going to use the uh, OBD Link, which is the software that came free with the device. My truck is uh, already, the key is on, ignition off. So let's see, let's try diagnostics. See if it'll bring us a trouble code there. Well, look at that, just about everything's good. So. I don't see anything for, no. Okay, so apparently this isn't going to read our uh, um, anti-lock brake system. This is only reading the uh, electronic control module. So that's a negative for that program, which is probably one of the reasons why I bought the 4-scan light. 
which it wasn't expensive I want to say less than 10 bucks so let's connect that and it's connecting okay so it appears we're connected now let's check for errors. Here we go. Down here at the bottom. Anti-lock braking system. Left front wheel speed sensor. So it doesn't get any easier than that. Now these other errors that you see on here, like safety belt, lamp, circuit failure, uh, that's because my seat belt isn't plugged in. Uh, this onboard diagnostic is basically because uh, the test wasn't complete. So that just uh, requires a process to go through that oil pressure switch failure uh, that's because the engine's not running so all that stuff is good it's not a worry here's the onboard diagnostic no air codes and uh, no air code down here restraint control module so everything really is working fine the main thing we care about is that one at the bottom for the analog braking system, left front wheel speed sensor. So, not a surprise. But that's how we do the diagnostics. Like I say, OBD Link MX Plus, that's the, the reader that we use. And the software we use for our Ford is 4Scan Lite. Um, I'm sure there's lots of other uh, lots of other apps available that work with different models of vehicles. The reason that we chose this one, now that I recall, I was working on uh, one of my Ford diesels, and uh, I wanted to do some injection testing, and so it has the ability to ping the injectors individually and do a test on that, and so. Uh, that program actually does that. That's why I originally purchased it, but I find it works great with all my Fords. So uh, Yeah, I recommend that that app if you're gonna use the uh, The module like we say, but there are lots of other apps available and the app that comes with it does just read basic trouble codes and everything but apparently it only does the uh, electronic control module and doesn't uh, read the anti-lock brake systems or other subsystems so uh yeah that's where we're at stick with us let's see how it goes okay folks so in order to uh change out the wheel speed sensor uh we do have to take off the tire and pull the rotor and everything so while this isn't a difficult job there are multiple steps involved, so it's not just a simple, uh, you know, take it off and plug a new one in. So before I uh, jack up the truck, first thing I'm going to do is just break my lugs with a breaker bar. just makes the process a little bit easier so the impact doesn't have to break everything free and now I'm going to get the jack under it
can pull the lugs off. See, that makes it go super fast. And get that tire out of the way. Now that was an Indy 500 speed, but it did make it pretty simple. Uh, we've got to take this rotor off because the speed sensor is in behind it. So in order to do that, we've got to pull the caliper. Okay, so there are two bolts that hold your caliper on. One here at the top. And one down here at the bottom, if you can see that. So we're just going to remove those two bolts. So that we can uh, pull that caliper out of the way. And that will allow us to take the rotor off. That is a 18 millimeter socket. Oops. Unfortunately, I got a deep socket and that ain't going to cut it. So I've got to go see if I've got a short socket available. Well, one of the problems I run into of having uh, two properties and basically have moved most of my tools already up to the shop is that uh, I don't seem to ever have what I need in either location there's always something that's missing anyway so all my short sockets metric are up at the property in the shop so uh, I was able to find a uh, open in wrench hopefully we can get this off Yep, that'll do it. So we just have to do it the old fashioned way. Nice and slow. But that's okay. Bottom line is, we're going to get it done. And same thing. Try to break the one on the bottom free. <coughs> some more leverage on that baby I can get the deep socket on the bottom so I'm gonna put that on my breaker bar and break that one free ah oh, that did it sometimes you just gotta use what you got Luckily, I just changed these calipers out not too long ago, so they're not rusted or corroded or anything. It's coming off fairly easy. Okay, so the bottom one we were able to fit the impact on enough to at least unscrew it. The top one, this brake line's in the way, and I don't want to uh, take off that brake line because then we have to re bleed the brakes and everything. So we're just gonna have to take it off slow. This is just more evidence that. Having the right tools for the job can make a world of difference. Doesn't mean you can't do it. Just means that uh, the right tools can be a lot faster. I 
a pneumatic impact ratchet with a uh, short 18 millimeter socket would take this off super quick and I actually have all that just not here all right we've got it loose enough now that we could take it the rest of the way by hand and so we're just gonna pull this uh, caliper out of the way here now it's on tight to the rotor so I don't know if we can no we can't leave it apart so we'll have to pull it off but our brake pads still look good in there which they should because they're not that old and now all I'm doing is just sticking this rotor up out of the way here so that it's not hanging on the brake line the caliper I mean and then I'm pulling the rotor oh so there's what I didn't want to happen of course worst case scenario would be that it breaks that you definitely don't want that so good way to do that is to uh, have a piece of wire or something handy to kind of hang that on and uh, I'm one hand in the camera and showing you this but that's the, the best way to do that is to have a piece of wire or something handy so that you can uh, hang that on it and it won't fall and that'll keep from risking your brake line so let me take care of that okay I didn't have a piece of wire handy but I did have a zip tie so I just zip tied that up and that's going to keep it from hanging on the uh, brake line so now we have access to the wheel speed sensor, this right here. So it's held on by a Allen head screw there. And it just kind of comes back around and uh, comes up somewhere. We'll have a uh, plug. There it is. And we've got a plug up underneath there. so. We'll get to that plug, unplug it, and put the new one on, but let's get this one undone first. Okay, so the main sensor head is held on by a five millimeter Allen. So, we'll get that out of there. And there it is and if we look at the end of it we can see it's pretty dirty so this is uh, kind of magnetic got a little sensor magnetic sensor there and it basically reads uh, something that's passing in there probably another magnet or something when it passes by it reads it to determine the revolutions per minute and that gets the wheel speed so this one may be still good it could have just been dirty that was the problem hard to say we're just going to replace it because it's not an expensive item an aftermarket of these uh 20 bucks or less now of course they're made in china so you never know how long they're going to last, but I guess for 20 bucks we can do it again. I think I got two of them for 20 bucks, actually. Okay, so this nut here on the back is actually an 11 millimeter. So if you're one of those folks who's always losing your 10 millimeter wrench, you'll be okay here because it's 11. All right, so once we remove that little 11 millimeter bolt holding this bracket a couple of clips i had a, a zip tie holding it here just tying it up and we've exposed the the plug and basically we're just going to separate that of course one-handed it's a little bit of a challenge but hey we got it and that's all there is to 
to removing it. Now we're gonna get the new one and plug it in and basically reroute it the same way we took that off. So I decided to start at the bottom and work my way up. For some reason it just seemed like a better way to go to put it back on. So first thing I'm doing is put the sensor in and tightening down that Allen screw to hold it in place. We got that. Now this one came with a plastic clip on the back which that doesn't really uh, do much for me. So I'm going to take the the metal clamp off of the oops taking the metal clamp off of the old one because that's a much better clamp and so just got to go around to the back here and see and okay so it's basically this one here Put that back around it and we'll put that 11 millimeter nut back in there and screw that to the back there. Okay so that's rerouted on the back. Now we've got our wire and I'm just gonna run that basically the same way that it was run before plug it in back to our plug and then I've got those clips that were on the old one that I'm gonna take those and use it to Secure this in a couple of locations. Try to see what we can clip to. We had one clip to the brake line there. And I will probably uh, put a zip tie back on that just to secure everything good. But basically that's it. We've run the route, so I'm going to take the caliper down, put that back on with the rotor, and uh, put this thing back together. Okay, so we'll put the rotor back on. Pretty simple. We're going to have to take our brake caliper down. Luckily zip ties aren't very expensive, so I just cut it off. Slide this back onto our rotor. Maybe it's tight. There we go. And then work our uh, bolts back in to hold that caliper. started on that one bottom one's a little bit harder because it's harder to see well this one just about screwed in all the way by hand that's nice okay so our calipers back on with our rotor you can see the new wheel speed sensor screwed in down there 
with the allen head comes back around bolted to the uh, back here we put clips that were on the old one a couple of them just tying it to the brake line for so it's not flopping around and then we followed the brake line right on up here and we zip tied it right here so the plug is up in there a little bit protected and uh, that's all there is to it all we got left to do is put the tire back on and it's finished not a difficult job okay folks everything's back together and on that wasn't too difficult so the only thing we got left to do now is to go in with the uh, code reader again and delete the trouble code so we're all back good to go thanks for joining us on another episode of keeping this old truck running <laughs> as always folks we appreciate you supporting our channel and watching our videos if you haven't done so already please like subscribe share the video out that's how you help our channel and uh, tell the next one God bless take care and we'll see you on the next one